the officials love us here. Why? I mean, just like this fella, he's got money. A lot of nomads come up here because of the elevation. He's got money. He's spending his money here. Flagstaff knows that. How far can cities go to clear out homeless people? Homeless camps, people living in vehicles, how far can they go? So I'm going to talk about this because it's a very juicy, interesting court case in the Supreme Court. And I'm going to tell you all about it. So let's go with that, okay? It's going to be interesting. Don't go anywhere, okay? Okay. Welcome to my wonderful home, my home on wheels. I live in my minivan, and yes, I do stay in cities. So this affects me, and it also is going to affect you. It's going to affect everybody, because there's two to three sides to this entire story here. It affects everybody. Homelessness affects people. Now, I know a lot of nomads, people who live in their vehicles, they say, I'm not homeless. Quit calling me homeless. Well, I will tell you that city laws and the courts do consider people living in a vehicle as being unhoused, which is another fancy word of being homeless homeless okay so you can call it what you want i'm not offended if somebody says i'm homeless i don't feel homeless because this is my home and i do want to welcome you okay let's get started with this there is a court case now it's pending but it has been argued it has been granted in january of 12th the Supreme Court granted that they would hear the case. And just three days ago, it was argued in the Supreme Court. The name of it is Grants Pass versus Johnson. Now I'm going to go with my notes because I did not memorize it. And I want to get it right, okay? I wish I was like uh, Walter Cronkite. Of course, he actually had papers too, didn't he? He'd go like this. <laughs> okay, yeah. Or Dan Rather. Who are some of the bigger ones now? Oh, well. Does it matter? So, should it be legal to sleep outside? Should somebody legally be allowed to sleep where they need to sleep? Because of circumstances. So, let me give you some details. Okay. Now, right now, the case is pending. We'll hear. It, it won't be long. And I don't know how Supreme Court cases, this is the first one I've ever researched, but we'll see when it will be delivered, the, um, the answer, okay? So Grants Pass is Grants Pass, Oregon. It has a population of approximately 38,000. Now, 50 to 600 of the people there that, that they counted are unhoused. And this totally exceeds the number of beds available to sleep in by the city. So the question of the case is, can a city's enforcement of public camping against involuntary homeless people violate the Eighth Amendment, which is a protection against cruel and unusual punishment? Now, the Eighth Amendment does, it protects against imposing excessive bail, excessive fines, and cruel and unusual punishment. And one of the reasons that that they actually said this is because if you don't have a place to sleep and you get punished for that, the basic premise of that is you're being punished for existing. Because if you can't, if you can't sleep, if you can't stop somewhere and sleep and you have nowhere else to sleep except a park or out in, out in the forest or, you know, in a parking lot, something like that, that if you are exempt from doing that, you are going to be punished for doing that. Then you're literally being punished for existing, right? 
because why should you have to travel to another city which probably has the same? I mean, it's, it's a human need to sleep somewhere and have a little bit of a privacy, right? I think we all can agree on that, right? So Grants Pass in Oregon versus Johnson. I did, Johnson was the, probably the person who put this class action together and put this all together. Now, what Oregon did over a course of um, a couple of years is they were having the problems. And so first what they did was they banned the use of stoves and sleeping bags. The, those two were stipulated. No stoves and no sleeping bags. Okay. Now, in 2018, they were punishing people for doing this. And then they took it to the Ninth Circuit Court and they agreed. The, I'm also going to talk briefly about Boise, Idaho. In 2018, they were doing the same thing. And the circuit court agreed, again, that um, that should not be punishable. Sleeping, being homeless, and trying to sleep should not be punished. But in 2018, the Supreme Court declined taking the case. Well, now they're taking this one, the one um, Grants Pass versus Johnson. Now, the Grants Pass ruling is going to be an ex is is an is going to be an expansion. It forbids not just criminals, criminal um, punishment, but civil penalties also. As reading about all of these different cases and all of these different articles, they said that, yes, there are civil penalties all across the nation for sleep, for being homeless, sleeping in parks, sleeping on um, places like that. But, and, and, and I think also sleeping in your vehicle. But what happens is, is all, even though they're just civil, that eventually, if they if it continues, then it becomes criminal, and they put criminal pe criminal penalties on you. And I read some of the cases where um, somebody would end up actually in jail overnight because maybe they'd picked up a, been picked up a couple times. This one gal, it said that she had nowhere to go, no place to sleep, so she went out into the forest. Well, they followed her out there and they brought her in and they put her in jail. So the Eighth Amendment might actually cover something like that. I can't wait to see what the actual um, decision is on this. And it says both for this for this case, Grants Pass versus Johnson, both left and right states submitted briefs on this and agreed. And they were... Idaho, Montana, Nebraska, and California, especially Los Angeles and um, San Francisco. Coffee? Let's settle in and let's talk about this, okay? Because I, I can understand both sides of the coin. Mm. Okay, next. Now, what Grants Pass did was they banned camps everywhere which essentially would ban people to exist. Number one, there is a huge housing shortage in this nation. There truly is. And there are reasons for that because I've talked about this before. What's happening right now, okay? Number one, a lot of people are, are putting up their homes for Airbnbs. So what they're doing because they can make more money that way. So what they're doing is they're essentially, they say that almost like an eighth of all housing has been now used, is used for Airbnb. That's a lot of homes. So when you use, when you use Airbnb or um, some of those other ones, I've, and there's so many now, um, yeah, essentially those used to be residences that somebody rented or lived in. So, yeah. Another thing, too, we have a lot of immigrants coming across the border. And I, I know there's articles on it. Some people say, well, where did you get this information? It's, it's pretty much open information. A lot of them are clearing them out so that the immigrants have a place because they can't just be sitting around also. They can't just be sleeping on the streets. So they're make, so they're, what they're doing is removing some people 
from it. And I've heard they're removing seniors and one of them in New York, they removed, they removed this huge veteran building that people, they could um, get lower rent. They emptied it out for immigrants coming across. So don't be mad at, don't be mad at me. Be mad at the messenger. Okay. Or don't be mad at the messenger. Be mad at the people doing it. Okay. And so that's another problem. And uh, the third thing that's going on in this country is a lot of corporations are buying up homes. They just are because people can't afford their homes. So they're, they're eating them up and then they're, they're renovating them and they are upping the rent sky high. It's, it's, it's going on. So, <laughs> um, there's a lot happening right now and people cannot afford the rent anymore. They just can't. They can't afford it. So there is that shortage. And it's, like I just said, it's unaffordable. unaffordable. People can't afford the rents. I, I probably could, but it would take every cent I had for rent. It would take every cent. Yeah. So, no. Um, I'm happy in my minivan, okay? Now, what they're doing is they're fining and jailing people and that makes the problem worse. I did, I did tell you about, it wasn't that long ago, I told you about this ruling. There was a class action suit against the city of San Diego. They were fining people for being in, in their vehicles. They were towing their vehicles and they had to pay exorbitant prices to get them out of storage. Well, it finally came to a head and they got a class action suit together. And guess what? They won. They're, they're going to have to pay not only the fines that they, um, that they imposed on them, but there's going to be some restitution also. And so there's going to be San Diego now is going to pay a big price. And I think this might actually grow across the country because other cities, this is going to happen across the country. And cities are going to pay a huge price for this. But if this Supreme Court case goes through and they say that, yes, it is cruel and unusual punishment for imposing punishments on people that don't have a home. Well, this this is going to affect the nation. So it's kind of it's kind of interesting. It's kind of exciting, isn't it? Now. Homelessness spiked in 2023. It really spiked because it was after COVID aid ran out. Remember, I mean, if people during the COVID, the COVID, the COVID year, um, 2020, it hit in 2020 and it went all the way to like 2022, two years worth where people, I mean, restaurants closed. Oh my gosh. Businesses closed down. A lot of people were out of work. They just were. They lost their jobs, which means they lost their income, which means they lost their, their homes. There was, um, for, for a lot of people, not everybody, but there was, um, there was aid that they could apply for to pay for the rent. But, you know, so you, you got to look at both sides. I mean, if you are a renter, if you own property, that really sucks for you, right? I mean, um, what are you going to do? That's part of your income. So, you know, there's both sides. There's always two sides to the coin. But that aid ran out in 2023. And there simply are not enough homes that people can afford. And it might even be there aren't enough homes, period. There aren't enough spaces. There aren't enough beds for people, period. So let's look at the other side of the coin. And I've been there. In a neighborhood that I lived in, in Tucson, when I had my home, um, there was a church. It was a really nice neighborhood. And there was a church that was letting homeless men sleep there. And they could go in and they could get a shower and then they could have breakfast and they would send them on their way. So it was essentially kind of a shelter, but it was a huge residential area and it was a little bit upscale. Well, you know, I didn't particularly like it. <laughs> there were a lot of homeless men that would walk down the uh, down the uh, street. And uh, when I would go walking around, I mean, I, I, I was never afraid. 
but it did sort of bring down the neighborhood just a little bit, right? And I would talk to my neighbors about, oh yeah, the church down there, you know? So yeah, there's two sides to the coin. So I understand what homeowners and what the residents and the locals are thinking about all of this. So here are officials' concerns, like city officials. They're sprawling tent camps. Oh yeah. I mean, you can see them. I will say when I was in Tucson, I would watch, you'd go down, there were just certain areas, like when you were going down, like, um, like small highways, not the I-10, but there were like aviation highway and things like that, 205, and you would kind of go down them. It was kind of like um, a way to get around the city quickly without the actual I-10 highway. Wow, you'd see like, woo, but you're going so fast you can't get a picture of it. But yeah, there were encampments going on, some of them very elaborate. So yeah, they're going on in Tucson, they're going on everywhere. Tent encampments. Now, the officials say it's a threat to public health and safety. And in some ways, I suppose it could be. There could be TB going on. Um, we don't know if people are, are, are being taken there and they could be a raped or something like that. I mean, I know this is stretching it, but these are officials' concerns. And personally, I wouldn't want to walk there by myself. I wouldn't want to walk into a tent encampment. There's a risk of being hit by passing vehicles. Well, yeah, it depends on where the encampment is, okay? Fires, yes. And disease, yes. And drugs, lots of drugs there. So. These are the officials' concerns on this. Now, they say that the Ninth Circuit rulings are ambiguous and too broadly interpreted. So, and this is why the Supreme Court is now going to decide, and they won't be ambiguous. The court rulings of the Ninth Circuit, which they ruled that, yes, and then it went to the Supreme Court, so we don't know what they've said yet, but the court rulings of the Ninth Circuit require local officials to build enough shelters for every person, okay? All right. But people are fed up with excuses and using punishment on the homeless as their only solution. So this is when it really got to the heart of the matter and they took it, they took it to um, the Supreme Court. Now this is brief on Boise. This was in 2019. It was coined, Boise is coined as one of the most livable places in America, okay? So people are saying though, if we want to prevent camps, because they're, they just tear them down. They're, they are, they have really become um, serious about this in Boise. They are fining people. They are putting them in jail. Yes. So the people are saying, if we want to prevent camps, we have to prevent homelessness. Boise wants to remain livable. So they say they will continue issuing tickets for homelessness. And then, like I mentioned on Tucson, yeah, there's this one park in Tucson. It's not too far from downtown. And it's on, um, I believe it's on 6th Avenue. I forget the name of the park. Santa Rita Park. Santa Rita, Santa Rita Park. It is always... It's, it's, as long as I've known Tucson, that park has been the center of homeless men, and probably women now, but home, mainly men, homeless men. And I notice now, they actually, during the day, I don't know what they do at night. I don't drive around at night too much. But what they do during the day is they have like shopping carts and they have like tarps. They have a whole, like an encampment and two or three guys are hanging around. It's sort of like they're having a party. I mean, you know, they're just sitting around and sharing each other's encampment. Yeah. So let's finish this up a little bit and we'll see what you have to say about this. It's funny too, because I did get a comment. I did get a comment and it was just, and I found it just before I was going to film this. It is from Rasa Alchemy. Okay, that's the way I think it's pronounced. It says, check the city, or this was from yesterday's video. 
check the city ordinances as to whether it is legal. Example, the city of Flagstaff, Arizona, has an ordinance prohibiting sleeping in your vehicle. You need to disperse camp outside the city. Well, let, let me say this about that. They might have an ordinance. Now, if, when it depends on what the Supreme Court is going to say, because that might become moot. Um, just right down the road. Being dispersed outside the city, that would take a lot of gas for some people. And some people, if they're homeless, they don't have that much. And they don't, I, I know, Flights F, there's not that much space. Now, last year, the one place way out in Flights, it's called Willard Springs, it's like 20 minutes from the city. That was closed, like two months out of the whole summer. You know, and people, it was closed like May, June, and most of July. So that was closed. Now, there's another one way out on on the west side of Flagstaff, and that's called Beaumont. I mean, that's like way out. It's, it's another 15, 20 minutes outside the city. That requires a lot of gas to go out there and come back in and get your supplies. And there are people that literally cannot afford to go out there. Okay? Now, the, obviously, Flagstaff doesn't enforce that city ordinance. So, I know. I mean, there are so many people living in their vehicles. They're travelers. They're nomads. Maybe a third of them are dirt poor. And you can tell by their vehicles. I mean, they got forced out of their home. I'm seeing it more and more. But there's a lot of them that they're in, like, in fact, I just saw one pull up. A really nice Mercedes, <laughs> like a, a Promaster, yeah, right? Um, no, and, and women living in transits and and uh, Promasters and, oops, somebody's, yeah. Oh, yeah, he just opened his sliding door. I mean, he, let's see, yeah, I mean, he's here. Whoops, he just went in. I guarantee he's probably sleeping somewhere in the city. I've been out to Beaumont. There's not like a, a, a billion, billion vehicles out there. There really isn't. And plus, I mean, there's a Cracker Barrel here, which I do not spend time in Cracker Barrel. Um, Cracker Barrel is filled. They have to be like a hundred and there must probably a hundred, hundred cars every night parked there. They allow them to, right? Um, the Walmarts here do not allow you to park overnight, although I suspect some are, because early in the morning there's some there. But what they'll do is every once in a while they'll come clean them out. They're not gonna, they're not gonna write a ticket for you. What they're gonna do is they're gonna probably tell you don't come back because you can't park here. There's actually a sign up there though. And along this one road here, oh my gosh, I mean, yeah, they just start parking there. Um, yeah, they just, uh, you got to find a nice place. That's one of the reasons I like my minivan. Nobody knows I'm here. I don't have a, um, a, a storage on top. I just stick to myself and I just look like anybody else in the, in the city. Um, I do not think that they will give me a fine. If, if they knocked on my door or whatever, knocked on my window, they're not going to give me a fine. They're going to say, well, you can't park here. Okay. But let me just tell you this. The officials love us here. Why? I mean, just like this fella, he's got money. A lot of nomads come up here because of the elevation. He's got money. He's spending his money here. Flagstaff knows that. They know that. Things are expensive up here. If they got rid of all of the van dwellers, the van lifers, full timers, that come up here for the summer, dude, they would lose so much money. Because in the summer, um, NAU clears out. So the college students aren't here to spend money. We are. We're here to spend money. And I joined another gym. I'm at Planet Fitness. I go to restaurants. Oh my gosh. Yes. So I use a lot of this. So let me know what you think. I mean, there's two sides to every story. Like I said, I was on the other side. Now I'm here. And uh, let me know what you think. But I will win this when, when, when there's a decision made on this case, and I will tell you, it's docket case 23-175. 
Grants Pass versus Johnson. We all can look for it, right? And see what they say, because this is important for, if, if they deem people who are living in vehicles as houseless, we're houseless. And even what you say on your letter there, I think your name was Raz. Um, if there's a provision that you can't sleep in your vehicle and we have nowhere else to go, I would pretty much say that anybody who says, well, I'm not homeless, the officials do um, categorize us as being homeless. I'm just saying, I'm not calling you homeless, but I'm saying what the officials say about us, that we are homeless. And so there you go. I think I'm done. I think I pretty much said everything. I do want to see what your comments are. I want to know what you have to say. I do want to mention that if you go to minivanlee.com and you have any desire whatsoever to support me, to give me a small gift, to keep me going with my videos for researching, and because I'm a small channel, YouTube does not pay me very much, okay? Just so you know, if you want to help support me, but I said, if you want to, you don't have to, seriously. If you want to, and you see it in your heart to do it, go to minivanlee.com and I tell you to go there because I don't use Patreon, I don't use PayPal because they take out a big chunk. I get 100% of everything. So when you give a gift, you're giving it totally to me, okay? And it does support me. And it's not uncommon for people to support a good YouTube channel, okay? So there you go. And let's see, oh, please subscribe. YouTube's playing a little game. They're either, if you got, if you rang the bell and now you're not getting notifications anymore, would you ring that bell again, please? And would you subscribe again, please? Because they're kind of unsubscribing people. Let's see, I think that's about it, okay? You guys have a really good day. And tomorrow I'll have another subject for you. I will. And I will mention, it is majorly winter out here. It is winter again. I was actually really cold last night. It was like 32 degrees in my van. <laughs> well, I asked for it. I wanted to go into cooler weather, right? Oh my gosh. Okay. Bye, everybody. See you tomorrow. Mwah. Love you. Bye.